I want to say on behalf of the city, we are here to celebrate the book which is well written. I read the book Prakusta. It is not an easy book if your heart is not strong. Because what is written in the story is not a simple story. It is touching. But we are the son of the soil. We are a hero of our liberation struggle. We are a son of our own country. I read this book and I think I must say that the very first page of it, uh, uh, which if you haven't read the book, I'm not going to spoil it for you. The very first page of it actually gave me goosebumps. Now, I love words, I'm a writer by profession, it's what I do. And so I find it quite exhilarating when you open a book and, and, and you see a story being told in the most authentic way um, with a person's voice and you know this person. And I think it's important um, that we are all here, but also equally important is the fact that there are younger people who are here, who have come to learn, who have come to be inspired. And I hope that it will, uh, uh, between all of us, really nurture a culture of reading, but more importantly, a culture of us telling our own stories in our own voice, in our own authentic voice, in our own way. From this simple, ordinary life, a plus yappy, simple life, a life of hardship, he became an extraordinary leader. History is made by simple people, speared by an inherent pursuit, really, for a better life. There are certain lessons here to be drawn, especially for our political activists, young political activists. The first one is to realize that when you do something for the very first time, do not think that it has never been done before. There is a certain newness that people who are new to something which lead them into thinking that this thing has never been done before. It is quite proper of any generation to question the status quo. But at the same time, they should be humble enough and appreciate the fact that there are others. The fact that you are where you are today is because of attempts and endeavors by those who preceded you. So there is value, therefore, in drawing lessons from what others have done before. And this is what Kusa generation realized when they form PECO, when they form the new SRCs earlier in the late, uh, late 70s, early 80s. They used leaders who had preceded them, leaders who had come from the island, because they knew that leaders, these leaders have been through this path. They have something to offer. I want to ask you, um, when it comes to deciding to write the book, what, what, what are the reasons behind it? Do you do it because um, you want to pay some sort of tribute to those people who've been part of your journey? Or is it um, to lay down a record of, of the history that, that, that you have? Or is it maybe to share lessons that you've learned with, with, with future generations? When you, when you made the decision, what? Because it's, it's an incredible journey. Yeah, it's to share. It's to share the experiences and uh, I believe that uh, my life has had uh, obstacles. And uh, I observed the obstacles. And I came to quick conclusion that obstacles, stumbling blocks, and setbacks must be crushed. There is no way of giving in to them. Because if you do so, you will find yourself with no space. So you've got to continue to go on. And at the end of the day, when you make it your, your business to crush stumbling blocks, to stand up to them, you ultimately, it becomes natural. It comes natural to you. Um, I'm going to take three um, hands uh, at this moment, and then we'll begin a conversation. May I please uh, have the first hands? Uh, I'm, I'm Ngaba Banga. Um, I want to ask you, with a diverse family that you, you have, you are a black person, you have a white wife, you have uh, your children, I don't want to, to give them a stick. Don't I bring DA now, that's a DA leader, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your view about, uh, about building a South Africa for all? Look, non-racialism is a sine qua non 
or quintessential for South Africa. We have no choice. We are like this, and this is how the world is. There's nowhere in the world where you are going to say to define your nation by pigmentation. The world, once you start to do that, once you start to do that, the world will destroy you. The world, when you will arrive at Heathrow Airport, you will arrive at JF Kennedy, the people will spit on your passport. The moment you become a country that defined people by race, the rest are short. Remember, racism was declared a crime against humanity by the United Nations. That has not changed. I, I, I'm very sad that to say that maybe you are the mayor we never had. You know, yeah. I, I, couldn't you really be in that committee, a mayor, so that we can have a change life in New Brighton? That's all I want. Um, Krista, if you get given the opportunity, would you serve as a minister? or as a mayor? And if so, what changes would you make? Sorry, are you guys campaigning for him? Uh, or? I'm <laughs> taking the mic away now. About Please. the mayor, the minister, forget it. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andy, Le, and Andy Le is still striving for that job. Let him, he's a young man. He got all the time in the world. He can, he can shape, but he must watch out. There are young people coming up. He must just shape up. That's okay. Ms. Kayla Jack. And there are three aspects that I unpacked in the book. The first is a historical account of Nelson Mandela Bay that had never been done before, I think. Um, something that's different you know, the descriptions of the different places that you'll read if you, if you haven't read the book thus far, um, and it's never been shown in that light. And then the second aspect is the personal story, um, from the hardships of being on the farm to the political turbulence, and then finally reaching the heights that had never been reached before in his family. Um, so that's what the second aspect that I took away from the book. And then the third one is um, one that has, I think has a universal message, and that's the message of kindness. Um, because, you know, it's the small gestures that led to the big actions and the big actions that led to the success. And from the success, it's about lifting up other people. Um, you know, it's not just about surviving and then succeeding on your own. It's making sure that others succeed along the way as well. And I think that's something that as South Africans, we really need to focus on along the way. Um, and I think that for those who are inspired by this book and end up... Um, getting to that point where they, you know, they've reached their own personal success, that it's not just about them, that it's about everyone around them, it's about the community and uplifting everybody else that is in their company. Um, so, yeah, that's just a small piece that I'd like to add. And then on top of that, um, thank you to the organisers, thank you to, to the publishers, um, to me for editing... <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. It was, more, it was more a case of saying, Dad, save the document when you're done. Because, <laughs> you know, you don't want to lose 40,000 words here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's one of the things. And then just, um, yeah, thank you to Nelson Mandela Bay for a rich history. It's something that young people appreciate and I think needs to be recorded by more people um, because there's so many stories that aren't told in this book but need to be told as well. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your evening. that one must read it. And I'm sure Kusta is talking about his experiences, especially during the era of the 80s. We were together in the struggle. I was leading NUSA, the National Education Union of South Africa, whilst they were busy with PECO. So I want to read about the ups and downs and how he succeeded after the democracy in 1994. To me, it's the story of somebody that grabs every opportunity that comes to him in his life with both hands and making the absolute best of it. So, okay. yeah. How did he get into business? How did he become a successful man? And also, the title is the background does not determine your future. I'm an educator and I just am interested in how he 
got to where he is now. Because the schools here are not doing well. So I'm concerned for my students. He's a multifaceted individual. He's, yeah. got, he's in business, he's in politics. Exactly. He's, what what, what, what area are you moving? From his education. So I'm just interested in how he got to where he is from where he was. Yeah. Nice to see that history will be recorded, you know, because we don't really record our history. So I'm looking forward to reading uh, Kusta's history because uh, I was part of that history. So yeah, it's nice yeah. to see yeah. things that happened during that time and yeah. related by, by Kusta himself. I'll tell you what I liked about the book. Sure. It, it, it gave a first-hand encounter of someone who was, he was removed from his home. I don't know how he still remembers those moments, but he takes us there. He puts us in that moment where his mom was there. There was pots, everything was there. It, he takes us through his story, and it's, it's easy to read, and you go through it quickly, and it's just it's a, a meaningful story. Did it, did it take you since, like, you guys are young, you may not have been there in the 80s when Prakusta was very active. Did it take you there at least to understand what was yes, going on there? Did, especially because we're in PE, we know these places, we know the streets. It definitely places you in the spot and it's, it was interesting to read, very interesting. For me, what I focused on was um, his relationship with Norti Skeltima. In the book he mentions um, a farmer that was very kind to him during apartheid, it's a white farmer. And to me that was just proof that humanity still exists. I mean, back in apartheid existed. That white farmer didn't have to be kind to Kusta. And Uti Kusta in the book that without that white farmer, he wouldn't have become who he is today because that farmer allowed him to stay and he went and he got educated. So I think at this time, at this juncture that we're in and as a country, I think it's very important that those stories are told, that there were the good white people to our black people.